Hello, my name is Paul Tranny. I'm a, an Adobe expert, and I'd love to take you through Adobe Edge Animate. And I want to take you through sort of all the ins and outs, just your overview of how you'd create a project, okay? Sort of the anatomy of an Edge Animate project. And it's weird because, hey, you know what? I'm not even in Edge Animate. And chances are you're going to start in a program like Photoshop to create whatever project you're working on. In this case, it's just a, a promotion for this uh, gallery opening. And you can see what I've created and I'd create it this way and you know get it approved by whoever does the approvals and then I'd start to export out all of these various graphics but you can see how everything is laid out so I'd start to export out these different graphics just like I would for a web page so maybe I want this hand uh, as a ping file and uh, maybe I want this to be live text with uh, maybe their web fonts but that's how I'd export out all of these graphics and sure enough that's what I've done if I go into this artist folder into design Here's the design PSD that I'm working on. Here's the JPEG, okay, just the template, if you will. And then you can start to see these other graphics, the swirls, which are separate in case I want to animate each one individually. I have the hand here, and I even have the background. So with all of my elements exported out, I can now go ahead and launch Edge Animate. So again, there's my files. I will launch Edge Animate and I'm gonna create a new file okay created a new file and check this out I've created a new HTML file is what I've done okay so it's not really a binary format it is an HTML file you can literally take uh, any HTML file you have and open it up in edge animate add animation and interactivity to it in this case I'm creating a new one I can come in here I can change the stage size maybe make it a thousand pixels wide by maybe 500 pixels high I can change the color as well just like that all using my properties panel so depending on what I have selected my properties panel will change okay pretty straightforward I will save this project now even though I really haven't done a lot with it but I'm gonna save it to this project folder where there is nothing right now I'm gonna call this artist okay here's my artist HTML that's being created now let's take a look at what actually what got made in this artist folder in this project folder right in here if we take a look we can see that here's the HTML file that I was dealing with but then this there's this artist.an file and all this really is is kind of shows you where the timeline marker is what color some of the layers are uh, it's not necessarily needed okay so again I can open up any HTML file in edge animate there's some additional files let's take it about take a look at this artist edge.js file if I take a quick peek at it we can see that this really sets up the stage and uh, all of my graphics so if I actually just look right down here it says hey the width is a thousand pixels and the height is 500 pixels that's great it even gives me the background color so that's what I've created in edge animate but it's great that I can work visually I don't have to worry about writing these lines of code but that's what it generates right there there's also this actions.js file and as I get into adding interactivity that's what will get added there there's also a preloader there as well okay so there's more you can do with publishing and really optimizing a lot of these files including these includes which is there's these jQuery min those can actually be pulled from a CDN basically I can optimize all of this so the, f the file size will be small uh, it's naturally small right now because there's nothing in it so let's go ahead and take a stab at really creating our project in edge animate so I'll close that let's go back into edge animate and I can start to import graphics okay I'll import a couple graphics I might have this background that I might want to import I have this design JPEG and that's really where I want to start with that design JPEG now this is how I work you don't have to work this way but nonetheless I can import this uh, template if you will okay so this is what I'm going to use to sort of recreate everything on top of it I just want this as my my guide if you will okay I can't see everything I have to do a lot of scrolling potentially okay not very effective well I can just decrease by uh, using that magnifying glass and I can decrease the size to get that to look good right like that okay if I take a look right down here look there's my stage 
Okay, that's everything. But right in here, here's that design that I've just imported. So I can turn on and off that eyeball just like I can in Photoshop, Illustrator, other programs you're used to. If I take a look, again, this is the timeline panel. We'll get into that later. In my elements panel, over here I see that design div. So that's what happens. It puts in everything's in divs. So it's just a division, an area that I can really have a lot of control with. Okay, so I'll cover this elements panel in a second. But that's how it's set up. So if I select this graphic, again, look at my properties panel. There's going to do so much with whatever graphic I've imported, whether it's adjusting the opacity, the position, you guys get the idea. I might decrease the opacity if I want to, and that's what I'll do, just kind of decrease it a little bit. Again, that's just my, my template graphic. And check this out, I can even lock it down so I don't accidentally move it. So I'm going to create elements on top of it. So from there, File, Import. Let's import some of the other graphics. And it's great, I can select multiple at once if I want to. Selecting about five graphics, selecting Open and I can bring in all of these graphics you can see here. Okay, I can start to position everything. And the first thing you'll notice is, wait, what? I, oh, I have this layering issue, okay? I'd really want to really control the depth of these images, like uh, this hand, for instance, should uh, potentially be on top of everything else, okay? Uh, and you can see these are separate pieces as well because I might want to animate each one individually otherwise they'd be part of the background but again back to my layering issue I want this to be in front of everything else so I can select uh, that hand you can see that hand right over here in my elements panel well let's go ahead and move it above all those swirls and as I do that see that black line brings it up to the top and you can see that it's now in front of or on top of everything else and I can position it like that. Alright, so that's how I control depth. Also in my uh, timeline panel you can see how everything's set up exactly the same, it's the same order, everything looks good. Alright, there's more I can do in fact, I don't have to import everything. I can start to use some of these graphics right in here so I can create a rectangle if I want to. So, you guessed it. Create a rectangle. Maybe change the color of that rectangle. Turn that rectangle into, well, maybe a line like that. Maybe bring it down here. Just keep it nice and simple. And I might want to animate uh, this rectangle, which I'm treating more like a line. Might animate it out. Okay. So there's that rectangle, which is now a line because I have that sort of visual control to create what I want to create. Uh, whether it's a rounded rectangle, uh, an ellipse, or a circle, I have that control to create what I want. I don't have to import everything. All right. In fact, this is going to be smaller in file size as well. All right. So let's move on from there because I definitely need to add some text. Okay. Definitely. In fact, let's do that right now. If I even turn off that background layer, you can see every artist was uh, first an amateur. Just whether they stay there is the big question. But uh, I can use the text tool and come in here and just type in, as I click right there, every. I get this text box so I can clearly read it, even though I can't really see what it says right there. So again, zooming in a little bit, let's take a look at that. There's my text, just dropping it right in there. So I'm going to quickly do this. Adding the text that I want to add, and it's adding just a simple font. Giving credit where credit's due. But I can take this text and I can control it in my properties panel as you'd expect. So if I want to decrease the font size, I can do that just by clicking or dragging, dragging or uh, typing in um, a specific number. But I'm scaling that down kind of like that. Let's make it 18. Let's make it italic and drop it right there. Okay. So that looks pretty good for, say, for instance, a system font. But I want to go beyond that. I want to add uh, maybe a custom font for the word artist. So again, coming in here, artist, let's go beyond this boring font that I have here. And it's great because you can use web fonts in Edge Animate. So I can go and add a font. You'll be given this box and it asks you, hey, do you want to 
You want to add a web font? Well, you're going to need this uh, font, fallback list, and the embed code. Well, where do you get those? Well, let's take a look. I can use something like Typekit, jumping in here, adding whatever font you want to add, uh, potentially launching the kit editor, but you're given a couple things in here. So you can use Typekit. Uh, you have the embed code right here to add, and then you have the name of the font right in here. So you can use you can definitely use uh, Typekit because it is so powerful, everything it has. But I want to show you a couple different ways because you can also use Google Web Fonts. Okay, So again, if you literally go to google.com forward slash web fonts, you'll be greeted by uh, this screen. And you can start to really take a look at all the text by word, even do a search, maybe display uh, just the handwriting fonts like I'm doing here and really deciding which font that you want to use. I want to use this one. I can't even pronounce it. Miss Fajardos, I have no idea. doesn't matter because I can add it to my collection if I want to. Select Use. It gives me that font. And right down here, it gives me that JavaScript. So it's literally taking that text, going in here, pasting it right in. Okay. So it did a copy and paste. Going into the font fallback list, scrolling down, miss however you say it, cursive is the fallback. Again, copying that text, I'm just doing a command C or control C if you're on a uh, PC, pasting it in as well, and selecting add font. And there it is, just like magic. I don't have to worry about making this a graphic like I'd have to do in the past. I can literally have this as live text that people can select, uh, maybe search for it. You can see how easy it is. So I want to do the same thing for the word amateur. And I'd want to make that appropriate uh, for the word amateur. So again, doing uh, the same thing as I jump in here, I can take a look at uh, that particular font as well. Uh, I want a cursive font. This crafty girls looks great, adding it to my collection. And you know exactly what I'm going to do next, which is just going to be taking this text, copying it, and adding it. So take a look at the first one that I've added. Let's add another one. Pasting in that embed code, and then back to the name. As I scroll down, you can see that crafty girls cursive, hiding that and pasting that in as well. There it is, scaling that down appropriately. Okay, so just doing a click and drag, I can get exactly what I want. Now again, I want to do this because I want this to uh, be real, real, a real web font in case I need to change it, but more importantly so other people can search on it. That's what I'd want to do with all of this. I can go ahead and turn on uh, those additional layers just to kind of bring in that other content. I can add additional text right down here just to follow my design, but you can see how this is set up. In fact, I will save this. I'd say it's looking pretty good. I can start to animate this as well if I want to, but again, this is just uh, your introduction to Edge Animate. Last thing I'm going to do is I can publish this out, optimize it, all that fun stuff, but really I just want to preview it in a browser. So here it is in my browser. I can optimize this some more if I want to, but check this out. I can select that text. Everything looks good. Since I'm previewing this in Chrome, which happens to be my default browser, I can take a look at my developer tools. And you can start to take a look at uh, all of these elements, just to point out that this is actually real text. Coming in here, you can start to see all of these different elements. OK, so you can see that word every, you know, again. almost every. Whatever you want to do, I can change that. Uh, just pointing out that uh, you can see that you can change that and that's real text. And this is great because I can show this uh, and have it preview and uh, really be displayed across multiple browsers, all modern browsers. There's even solutions for older browsers that I can get into. Uh, I can view this on uh, tablet devices, even on phones as well, smartphones. Very powerful what you can do with Edge Animate, so I really encourage you to just try it out today.